Welcome to Your Hero Academia by Fangirl48 on EO3. Chapter 22, USJ, Part 5. Tomura Shigaraki. Tomura Shigaraki. Tomura fucking Shigaraki. Oh, this had Hitch Hisashi written all over it. Izuku could count on that hand. The number of people currently in Japan with the surname Shigaraki included the ones who got married or changed their names. And not one single damn one of them was named Tomura. Sure, there was a chance this clip was originally from somewhere other than Japan. But the odds of an international villain with Izuku's last name and his brother's first name coming to the USJ to attack a class of hero students? Seriously, what were the odds of that happening? Tomura. A large shadow enveloped the two as the strange person appeared with impressive speed over Tomura's shoulders. A hand reached out to not attack Izuku, but rather the two students hiding behind him. Letting go of the villain's wrist, Izuku smacked Nomu's hand like one would a naughty child. Back off. Green eyes ordered as they turned from a normal emerald shade to an acid green. Tomura grinned. It would only be a split second before Nomu tore the hero's wannabe apart. So much for acting tough, you stu- Whimper. Both did the clay villain and Kuragiri looked at the hulking bemoth with them, the creature taking a small step back away from the brat. Izuku used the shoreline to lift himself back onto solid earth. Tomura shifted backwards, trying to distance himself from the potential threat in front of him, only to freeze when the brat reached up and used the water to slick back his hair. It was... That was... Impossible. How could this brat have Sensei's face? Izuku glanced towards Aizawa, feelings of new surge of rage. Originally, the plan was to check in on the underground hero. Depending on what they found, Izuku was prepared to send the students away and join the fight, or grab them both and make way where everyone else was gathered and watch at the top of the stairs. The students came first. The logical part of Izuku knew that this would be what Aizawa wanted. The man had his pride as a hero and a teacher. But seeing this thing brutalized the man he considered a friend. The all-or-nothing user's brain just couldn't catch up to what he was seeing. He froze. Nezu had shown Izuku a lot of different-looking mutation quirks, but none of them had looked anything like this villain. <clears throat> that exposed brain. It gave Izuku a bad feeling. S Ashi, Mineta, Izuku said, standing tall before the villains. When the pair did answer, Izuku turned to his students and raised his voice. Hey! Ribbit, sir. Yes, sir. The two straightened and yelled together. Izuku couldn't even give them a smile right now. It would only take a moment of distraction, and things could go horribly wrong. Remember what I told you on the boat? The two remembered the warm hand resting on their heads. I'll protect you. I need you two to get a racer head and head to the others. Izuku shifted off the coat, handing it to the pair. As much grief as May may give him later, if the inside part of the jacket was used, it could be made into a makeshift band-aid. There was no guarantee that Sero or Yariozu were still up there and the kids still needed to have their class about what medical tools were best to keep in the field. The next class, Izuku would go over that in great detail, maybe even ask Recovery Girl to sit in. Ashiri frowned. But, sir... Not up for discussion, Izuku growled out. Do it. Now! The pair jumped slightly and moved away from everyone a few feet down the shore, getting out of the water and running towards the fallen teacher. Hey! Shiraki yelled at the pair, who froze and looked at the villain fearfully. I'm not done with him yet. I still haven't finished this fight and gotten my XP. 
deceleration, or perhaps a dehydration quirk of some kind, five-touch activation. Izuku's eyes narrowed at the ashen-haired villain. Dangerous only when ma contact is made. You've got the speed, but judging from what I've seen, you don't got much muscle to back it up. Green Eye glanced at students. Why are you still here? Go! Ashui and Mineta nodded, the pop-off user carefully covering his teacher with the coat. Before they picked up Aizawa and began to trek to the staircase where Mina was yelling for them, Uraraka already moving down the steps. Her most likely plan was to use her quirk to speed up the journey to the two carrying their teacher. Returning his attention to the trio in front of him, Izuku kept going. I've been told warp quirks are rare. Gotta admit, it lives up to the reputation. Powerful and hostile nature in it. It makes you a tricky person to fight against. The way this child spoke, Kyogori couldn't help but find it strange. More so than his unnerving appearance, similar to Sensei. The big guys, here's my biggest threat, Izuku said, lifting his hands and letting a little lightning dance between his fingers. I mean, statistically speaking, you two may be fast, but I've got a way to beat warping. Tomura sneered under Falter. Oh, yeah? The second there was a flash of bright light from the all or known nothing user's hands. Glancing between them, Tomura and Kirigiri both felt their eyes widen at the deep gash in the concrete. In the center of the tear was what looked like a whip made of light. As it pulled back, it unwound, revealing five separated pieces attached to Izuku's hand. Both villains had seen Sensei use his quirk enough times to see the similarities. Who? Just who the fuck are you? Tomura said, some long-burned feeling of abandonment surfacing. Why do you look like that? And that quirk? Ah, ah, quid pro quo. Izuku whipped all his fingers, turning all or nothing off. I'll tell you who I am, if you tell me who gave you that name. Tomura was starting to get angry. What's your obsession with my name? Because, Izuku put his hand on his chest. Names are important. When someone gives something a name, it binds them. Red eyes blinked as an old memory surfaced. Flashback. Senko sniffled softly, trying to push back the sheer deep into his closet. The boy hadn't meant to, but he had that dream again. Someone was yelling at him before everything became too loud and wet. Henko Shukakuri. A soft voice came just as there was a knock on the door. Freezing, the child slammed the door shut and ran back to the bed, pulling the blanket over his head, trying to hide, being careful not to touch the blanket with all five fingers. There was a creak as the door opened and shuffled of feet heading towards the bed. Henko Shukakura. Are you okay? I... Tenko held his breath, all kinds of terrible thoughts rolling around his head. So he was unprepared for fingers to reach out and tickle his feet that stuck out. Trying to hold it in, Tenko resisted a few more moments before he started laughing, accidentally gathering the fabric in both fists, decaying the blanket a second later. Green eyes met red in surprise for a moment before the young boy began to cry, moving as quickly away from the man who had taken him in, only to be stopped by a wall. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Tinko chanted, covering his head. All for one, sat frozen, looking at the boy, unsure of what to do. Over the past two centuries, he had taken in numerous children, but they had all been older. It was more like mentoring them, really. Even despite their similar experiences to Tenko Shirakura's, they have never acted like this while under his care. At times like this, the small part of Hisashi Shigaraki that remained deep, deeply missing his wife, all for one felt a scab in his heart as he pushed his rarely free curls away from his face. Thoughts of Inko never led to anything good. Putting a hand on the mattress, all for one found it wet, quickly deducting what had happened. The man got up, 
without a word, went to the attached bathroom, washed his hands, grabbed a face cloth, carefully wringing as much cool water as possible. All for one, returned to the bed and sighed when the boy had not moved from his new spot in the corner. Sitting back on the bed, the villain held the cloth out to Tenko. Come on now, Tenko Shigura. Let's wash away those tears. Hesitantly reaching out, Tenko took the cloth. The newly ashen-haired boy felt deja vu, like someone had once done this for him, as he wiped his face. Closets were under the bed. All for one ass. Tenko crooked his head, looking confused, so the villain tried to look as non-threatening as possible. The sheet. Face blushing, Tenko briefly glanced at the closet and looked away in shame. Getting up, all for one opened the closet, ignoring the smell of urine as he gathered the sheets and placed them in the room's empty hanger. I'll get the pillowcase. Why don't you go get change and we'll throw these in the wash? Tenko slowly nodded and slid off the bed. Sensei would probably punish him later. This was the third pair of sheets Tenko had destroyed this month. Re-entering the room, Tenko placed the cloth in the hamper and shifted nervously from side to side. All for one, kneeled in front of the child. Can I carry you? Or would you like me to walk with you? The child guffed and shyly gnawed his arms off. Tenko's quirk was dangerous, but not many people touched him anymore. But Sensei had a way of keeping himself safe from Tenko. Crouching down, all for one picked up the boy and hammered easily, balancing them both as they made their way to the laundry room. Setting the machine on quick load, all for one started walking down the hall again with Tenko in his arms. But instead of making their way back to the boys' room or the living room, all for one took Tenko to the locked room. Now this room had only sometimes been locked, you see. When Tenko arrived, he took the time to explore every inch of the multi-floor apartment Sensei had given him. The room used to be empty save for a bed and a dresser. Not a great hiding space. But in the last month, Tenko noticed the door was locked, kind of like the room. Sensei said it was his. But Tenko needed to find out if that was true. Why would a man like Sensei have a place so empty and with so many rooms? Surely someone as amazing as him would have a lot of things to show off how successful he was. Tenko Shikakuruma. All for one spoke carefully to not frighten the boy. I... I would like to apologize. Huh. I am not accustomed with living with someone, the villain said honestly. It has been decades since someone last resided here with me. Tenko looked down. I'm sorry, Sensei. I can leave if you misunderstand. All for one shook his head, interrupting the boy. I do not want you to leave, but I cannot allow things to continue as they are. All for one was seeing an increase in villainy and crime. More and more people were trying to raise up and claim his position as leader of the criminal underground. Even if that buffoon All Might runs around taking care of the bolder idiots, the smart ones use the distraction to build up their forces in the shadows. All for one was working more and more to keep control. The villain would never regret taking Tenko Shirakuma in. Even thoughts of what Nomura Shirakura or her alternatives would look like if they found out he had started to fade. Each time he returned home, he saw the boy doing his schoolwork, or they quietly ate the few meals All for One could make together. The villain found himself growing more and more attached to the child, but something had to change. Tenko Shirakuma's nightmares worsened, and there were few people All for One could trust to look after his ward. Iroko was the only one who had not politely declined the offer when it was brought up, but the doctor was immersed in Project Nomu, and All for One had seen his lab's bodies of the worst criminals floating in the tanks, all various of stages of mutation. As detached from the world as he was, even All for One knew that that's not the sort of place for a child. So instead, All for One had asked the doctor for a special Nomu. With all the hospitals Erika had, numerous comatose patients, 
to choose from. The only script that he gave was that there was no chance of recovery and that the person had to be good with children. It took a while, but the doctor soon contacted him about a man who had been in a coma for 15 years, a former teacher. The man in question, whose name Urukumu, wisely blacked out, had spent many years teaching and volunteering with kids. He had been a foster parent who was tragically injured when he was saving one of his children from a collapsed building due to a hero battle nearby. Unlocking the door, the pair stepped into the room. Tenko's eyes widened at all the machines that had magically appeared, wires and a big tube connecting them to the bed that had been pushed to the center, or more accurately, the figure that laid on the bed. Tenko leaned forward slightly, looking closer to the persons curiously. He looked like a big dark cloud, like that one Pokemon in the game Sensei had given him. As you know, I work a lot, Offer One said, finding the way Tenko Shirakuma reached down and ran his hands through his misting deering. So I, to ensure you do not get lonely when I'm away, a colleague of mine found a person who will be able to take care of you. They were in an accident a long time ago. When they wake up, they will have no memories of who they were before. But I believe that face of personality will not change. Tenko froze and pulled his fist back, clenching, held tightly against his chest. But, but my quirk. You'll be fine, Offer One smiled softly. Part of their quirks allow them to take on mists like for properties. And remember, as long as you don't touch the skin directly, your quirk will simply pass through them. Oh, Tenko said, nodding. And you'll still come to visit? Tenko Shirakuma, this is my home. Offer One shook his head. Just like it is now your home, and theirs as well. Home, Tenko repeated. Something about the world made him feel warm inside. This is my home. Offer One nodded. That's right. And it's Sensei's home. Tenko pointed to his guardian before pointing to the sleeping figure. And it's... Sensei, what's their name? They don't have one. Not yet, anyways. Offer One tilted his head. Having been stuck on what to call the Nomu. They were a special one of his kind. Even the high-end models, or a promise, would be nothing compared to this one. Names are important, Tenko Shirakuma. Always remember that. When a person gives you a name, it binds us. Tenko looked confused. Does your name mean something, Sensei? The man smiled bitterly, the image of a laughing woman, wearing a white dress dancing before him appearing. Indeed, the villain said, kneeling down and putting Tenko on the floor deciding to change the subject. Since this person was born for you, how about you name them? M me Tenko looked surprised. The villain hummed and nodded. Tenko licked his lips, feeling extremely nervous. What if this person didn't like him? What if they were scared of him? What if he hurt them? Some black fog seemed to reach out and caress Tenko's cheeks as if sensing his distress. Suddenly the boy wanted to hug the person and just disappear in their warm embrace. Kirugiri. Kirugiri. Black fog. Offer one hummed, putting his arms on the bed and resting on them. I like it. Simple yet complex and very mysterious. It suits them well, Tenko Shirakuma. Tenko smiled and leaned on the bed, mimicking Sensei. Suddenly the thought occurred to the child. Can you give me a name, Sensei? Hmm, the man said, turning his head and looking at the child. But you already have one, Tenko. But, but I don't want to be Tenko Shirakuma anymore, the boy said. A spark flashed deep in those red eyes. Tenko Shirakuma is always scared. I don't like it. And you said I don't have to do something I don't like. Offer one side. He had indeed said that. Then how about I give you my last name? The man offered. Tenko Shigaraki. No! The boy yelled, suddenly surprising all for one. Not Tenko. I hate Tenko. He's a stupid crybaby who always is scared. He wants to be a hero, but the heroes let him... Left him when he needed them. I want to be brave. I want to be like you, Sensei. 
All for one felt his lips twitch in a slight frown. The reaction was worse than when Iroko suggested giving the boy the preserved hands of his family. It worked for a time, providing the boy with some comfort, until All for one found Tenko wearing Kura Shirakuma's hand on his face. His face! The villain would kill him again if the man wasn't already dead. He thought of grabbing Irakuma's face like that. All right. The man nodded, knowing this was a losing battle for now. Later on, hopefully Kirigiri could help him. Inko had always said that Hisashi was too soft to say no to his brothers or his son when it mattered. But just because I gave you a new name doesn't mean Tenko Shirakumi disappears. Someday you will have to confront him, understand? Yes, the boy answered, nodding vigorously. There were many names off one could give him, but, as always, two stuck out in his mind the most. I do have a name. Two names, actually. They... They belong to some very important people. If you like, you can have one. Tenko's eyes widened for a moment, and all for one thought it was because the boy thought he would replace a dead person. I don't want you to think you're replacing them. All for one held up his hand waving them nervously. I made a promise to my... to someone I loved very much. We said we would name them after these people if we had more children. The boy dove at the villain, not letting all five fingers touch him. Please, I, I want it. Please, I want to be with you forever. All right. Offerum wrapped his arms around the boy, carefully hugging him. Then welcome to the world, Tomura Shigaraki. My son. Okay, uh, I'm not crying, you're crying. Um, <laughs> okay, that was, um, uh, ooh, gotta breathe in. All right, that was something. All right, the whole names have a meaning, especially when given to you, that is, yeah. Okay. Ooh, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Can we talk about All For One and how gentle he is with Tomura? It's very interesting to see. You know, him being so gentle with Tomura and all that. And it's just, this author has a really good way of humanizing all for one, right? It, he's very humanized. And that flashback, my heart, my heart. Also, if Kurogiri is that, you know, teacher or whatever, right? Does this mean that in this universe, Kurogiri isn't you know, the same person. Like, underneath that, Kirigiri isn't the same person that, uh, that supposedly is. Or did the doctor lie to all for one? Because I feel like the doctor would lie, be like, oh yeah, this person was like completely comatose and had absolutely no way of, you know, like, you know, ha 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 ha, and it was actually a kid, you know, who died instead of, you know, but that's just a thought thought from mind i can't wait for the next chapter when we finally get to see the whole everything like i wonder how is it gonna unravel how is everything gonna go how is everything gonna you know like i'm so excited and we're nearing the end we have five chapters oh my god no i love this fanfic so much i don't want it to end i'm pretty sure you guys don't want it to end either we have five chapters no i'm gonna cry i'm gonna start crying again no ah i'm crying ah <laughs> um as always my raindrops make sure to eat sleep, drink water, take your meds, have a wonderful day or night, join our community. Oh, I did the old one. Ah, okay. Uh, the link to all my socials are down in the description and the link to my discord server is also down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content and thank you so much for watching.